Everyone knows about Iceland's impressive wonderland of beauty, but intertwined with the glaciers and the volcanoes is a special cuisine worth sharing. Inspired by the simple ingredients of the island, traditional Icelandic cuisine is uncomplicated but cozy. And today we are going to give it a try for the first time ever here in Reykjavik. We hope you enjoy our first video in our Iceland series. So let's grab our coat and head out for brunch. Been around here for a while you'll know that I'm always a little bit nervous on food tour days just because I'm trying to showcase a country's cuisine but today I'm actually more nervous about the pronunciation of all the foods and I actually spent like a solid hour last night googling how to say all these wild foods so um, you know do have some grace with me in the comment section if I mispronounce these but I want to share a little bit of the basics of Icelandic food before we head to our first restaurant so kind of like most Scandinavian countries traditional Icelandic food used a lot of ingredients from the land so that's gonna be a lot of free roaming sheep a lot of hearty vegetables and also a lot of seafood so I think we're in for a treat today and we're gonna head on to our first restaurant The very first thing we're trying today is actually a drink, and this is apple scene, and it kind of looks like an orange soda. So let's give it a taste. Very solid. It tastes like an orange Fanta, but I really like the bottle packaging. I think it's very unique. Here we have a roasted Icelandic lamb shank, and something that's so special about the sheep here in Iceland is that they have free range diets, meaning they get to drink delicious glacial water and dine on fresh plants and berries, and so their meat is very, very good. Oh my gosh, this looks like it's gonna fall right off the bone. <laughs> Got that delicious sauce all smothered onto it. <laughs> it's like a Thanksgiving feast right here. This is amazing. My mouth is watering so much. <laughs> the skin, oh, it's just, how do you think they, do they bake this? It's a sauce, it's really good. We devoured that first plate probably a little bit too fast but it was just so good and now we are moving on to this combo plate that has five things from my list which honestly just made me so happy and we'll include the price of this whole plate at the bottom and so let's talk about this one here first this here is plokfiskir and this is the national stew of Iceland it is a fish stew made with either uh, Atlantic cod or haddock and it's mixed all in there with some hearty vegetables so things like potatoes and onions Onions. and then of course you've got a very delicious white sauce to combine everything together and it is sitting on a thick piece of rye bread which I'll talk about in just a second but let's give this a taste Wow I think the first thing I want to comment on is just how good that rye bread is but that stew on the top it's it's just so cozy and it would be like the perfect pick-me-up after a long day especially out in the cold this is amazing. I've just never heard of stew on a piece of bread. I haven't either. <laughs> Pretty awesome. So this rye bread is not like typical rye bread that I've seen. It reminds me of like a gingerbread. Isn't that so good? Mm -hmm. That's really solid. Wow. Obviously, we think this rye bread is complete magic and in Icelandic, it's actually called pupus. And this is a traditional dark rye bread with no crust and it is a staple to the Icelandic cuisine. And traditionally, it is baked in a wooden cask that is buried underground just a couple centimeters away from a hot spring. That is very, very unique and it makes this delicious, dense bread that's just a little bit sweet. Underground? Yeah. Whoa. It's like a hot spring rye bread. That's so cool. Isn't that amazing? I love it. It's so moist. Next up on our combo plate is harfiskir, and this literally translates to hard fish. It's an Icelandic delicacy of dried fish, and Icelanders just love to snack on this. We've been recommended to eat it with some butter. The feeling of this is really interesting. It kind of reminds me of hay. Like, it's very dry. It kind of falls apart in your hands. The first thing I definitely taste is the butter. 
of course, and you actually have to chew it a little bit to get the taste of the fish to come through. But the texture is so interesting. Also, I thought the fish would be like extremely salty, but really there's like almost no salt on it. Next up we have Hongyeo, and this directly translates to hung meat. And that is because it's a smoked lamb that's hung in a way that preserves the lamb meat while also increasing its flavors. And this is actually the preferred meat for the Christmas time for the Icelanders. Um, so it must be really, really good. So I'm having it on some rye bread and it's just an abundance of smoky flavor and the meat is just so tender It's almost like a smoked ham, but a little bit richer because of the lamb meat, but that is so delicious Now we've got two things that have been recommended to be consumed together And it might be one of the most daring things on our list today. I'm gonna start with talking about this one So this is Hakka and this is a fermented shark meat and Actually, a lot of locals here don't really like it, but um, it's just really emblematic of the Icelandic heritage because their ancestors back in the day would eat this because it was one of the foods that could actually survive the harsh winters here. And I don't know if this is TMI for a food tour, but back then they actually used to ferment it with urine and then they would place it underground. But of course that practice has been outdated, thankfully. And so today we're going to try some fermented shark. And you're supposed to follow this with this here, which is Brennavine. It is a strong schnapps made from fermented grain, has absolutely no sugar in it, and it's been a part of the Icelandic culture since the 16th century. And it has the nickname Black Death, so this must be very, very strong, and I'm actually, <laughs> actually so nervous to try it. Our server said to start with this, chew it for about five seconds, and then shoot back some of this black death right here. Shark time. Whoa, 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 we gotta cheers it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready to consume that shark. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. Actually, that's not bad. Tastes like, it's like cottage cheese or something. It's peculiar to me. All right, let's shoot this back. Oh, that's actually not that bad. That went down extremely smooth for me. <laughs> Chad is struggling on the other hand. This shark is, um... <laughs> Chad's feeling some sort of way. Yeah, the shark, shark is very confusing. We are now in dessert territory, my favorite time of day. And this here is Rubrisis, and this is a rye bread ice cream. So apparently Icelanders really like ice cream. There are actually ice cream shops all around town. So this kind of mixes like their traditional foods with their modern delicacies. So ice cream and rye bread, it can't get better. Mmm. <laughs> I'm getting some like very warm notes, so. Kind of tastes a little bit like caramel, a little bit like cinnamon, very autumnal flavors. <laughs> we also have klena, which is said to be the most popular pastry here in Iceland, and it kind of looks like a donut mixed with a croissant. So this is a twisted donut that has cardamom, nutmeg, and sugar. Definitely a lot denser. It's almost like, it feels like a pretzel mixed with a donut. Hmm, very good. In any case you guys didn't realize, the view is amazing. Yeah, we've been hiding the view from you this whole time. Very honestly, I don't think we could have asked for a better first meal here in Iceland. And the Icelandic cuisine just reminds me very much of holiday food. Um, and I said this over in Finland as well, but just like the combination of the cinnamon, the roasted lamb, the fish stew, and the rye bread. I mean, it just brings me right back to the holidays and it's just cozy vibes all around. Yeah, and it was honestly really shocking for me being here in Reykjavik. It didn't feel like we were in the capital city of this country next to one of the most iconic landmarks here. I thought it would be swarmed with tourists and people, but it felt like we were just at like a little cafe in a small town. Yeah, it really does. Mm -hmm. And also, even though we are in the city, the nature is just so intertwined with mm -hmm. it all. And I love that we're feeling autumn for the first time yeah. in so long. For the past two months, we've been in France and Italy, and it's been hot. Brut the heat wave. <laughs> brutally hot. And so it's just really nice to be breathing in crisp autumn air yeah. and very fresh air at that. But I think while we digest just our food, we're going to explore the church that's behind us, as well as walk the streets of Reykjavik. Mm -hmm.
I'm so excited to hear Chad try to pronounce the name of this church. <laughs> so the church behind me is called Holmskrivskilka. <laughs> <laughs> But this church was actually designed back in the 1930s, but it was not actually constructed until like 30 years ago. But it was designed by one of the most famous architects here in Iceland, and he was inspired by the basalt columns that you find naturally occurring here on the island, um, which you can see on the columns that go up along the church. Honestly, I'm obsessed with this building. I think it's so cool. I think it perfectly captures like the Nordic history um, while still having this modern feel all with the church. So, I think we're going to try and head inside and see what it looks like on the inside. What? Oh, that's cool. Wait, the organ. We've been walking down the main road from the church and suddenly the roads have turned to a rainbow and it's very, very colorful. It's lining the rest of the street. Conveniently, we are seated right next to the rainbow road and I've ordered us two hot soups because it is getting chillier. The first soup we have here is chilled supa and this originally translated to meat soup, although the meat in here is just lamb. And that is because back then, pretty much lamb was the equivalent to meat. And so here we have some free range lamb and some vegetables in a very nice and hot soup. It's actually very, very hot. I feel like I don't have lamb soup very often. It's usually like beef or chicken. And so this is a really interesting taste that I actually haven't had in a soup before but it is very good. Next up, we have Uchma Supa, which is a lobster soup, but it's not any kind of lobster. It's actually this very tiny lobster that's called a langoustine. And if you look at them, they actually look like shrimps. I think they're so cute. Mm. That is like even bouncier than a shrimp. I didn't think I could get any bouncier, but I have been proven wrong. This is really good. I have a surprise for you. What? Were these free? Yeah, they gave it to us. Oh my gosh. This is like way better than like the complimentary mint or lollipop <laughs> you normally get I at know. restaurants. I was so excited. Well, we'll have it tonight. Which one do you think I should get? I like the gray one so actually. Cute. Yeah, yeah, but this one's tail is curlier. Well, a new country means another ornament for our Christmas tree. And here I have the cutest little sheep. It is so round, which is perfect because I'm obsessed with round things and it has the most darling face. But all around Reykjavik, we've been seeing this Icelandic sheep wool. And I love that this is made out of it. And of course, it's also a sheep itself. So this will be hanging on our tree this year. <laughs> well, now that we have acquired our ornament, we are actually gonna walk to the coast and I can already see these huge mountains in the distance with the water in front. And I have to say, it has just been such a beautiful day. Could not have asked for better weather. So we were walking by this building and I saw this steam coming off of this water. And I suppose that they have like geothermal water here. So it's like a very warm 98 or so degrees. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. The bottom of the pool bed looks like an ogre or something. <laughs> like Shrek. <laughs> looks kind of creepy. One of my favorite things to do is to run over to the edge of the pier and look over to see what's in the water. And today I have found a hundred million jellyfish. <laughs>
All right, I guess it's hot dog time. This here is Pilsner, and this is a famous Icelandic hot dog that's made from a blend of beef, lamb, and pork. And this place that we just went to called Bilherin Besu Pilsner has been open since the 1930s, and they make this very special hot dog. And so today we've got it with this really delicious sweet brown mustard and then also some remoulade. So let's dig in. <laughs> That's pretty good. That is a good hot dog. Also, I forgot to mention, on the bottom, there's some fried onions as well as raw onions. Wow. It's like what you'd imagine in your wildest dreams for a really good hot dog to taste like. Mm -hmm. That mustard on the mm -hmm. top, it makes it for the onions too. Mm -hmm. Nice and crunchy. Guess who's in line for another one? <laughs> All right. It's hot. Wow, it is like it in. really warm. Oh yeah, Chad ate like his entire half in one bite. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Let's see if I can go as big as Chad. Bigger, bigger. Don't get any napkin though. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> never seen you eat that big of a bite. Is it as mm. good the second time around? They do a good hot dog, wow. We have made it back to our Airbnb to try what is said to be the best thing from our food list. So we did save the best for last. Da -da 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 -da. Here we have skiff, and this is an Icelandic yogurt. You can put all sorts of toppings on it, eat it however you'd like. But we are eating it au naturel today mm -hmm. because we want to really taste the yogurt itself. Ooh, very Whoa. thick. It reminds me of Greek yogurt but like more cheesy. Mm -hmm. Extremely thick, mm -hmm. very creamy. Be even better with honey and blueberries. <laughs> we ate more things today than we've ever done in any other food tour. We actually ate 14 different Icelandic foods and honestly, we really loved all of them. So I just can't wait to keep exploring this country. If you'd like to see our Iceland series, which is gonna be coming out very soon, I guess it's already coming out because this is the first video, please hit subscribe and join us as we travel to 50 countries around the world. And as always, a very, very deep and heartfelt thank you to our Patreon family for supporting us through everything that we decide to do and for cheering us on. With that, we will catch you in the next Iceland video. Bless. What is that word? <laughs> bless. bless. Bless up. Bless is by in Icelandic. Bless, bless. <laughs> yeah, no context there.